I want to talk to you a little bit about meth because uh, uh, for me personally, in my own life, I've seen this kill, destroy so many people in my own environment. Um, if you're a gay man in America, this is a hor horrible epidemic um, that is, is truly destroying people. Never talked about because no one's... Certainly the gay groups are uninterested because it means airing what some think is dirty laundry. But um, I've seen people, in this case, completely unable to get out of that drug. It seems a very, very potent chemical thing to put in people's brains. And it seems I've never, I've never witnessed someone recover from it. Well, they can. That, that's for but sure. And I, I hate to say it, and I'm here thinking of my, my friend, Carl Hart, who's even done, uh, I'm sure you're, you've heard of him lately. He's been in the news a lot. He has this book called Drug Use for Grownups. It's controversial, but I think it does make some good points, uh, which is the one you were making before, which is that these drugs have to be seen in context. Mm -hmm. And he goes out of his way <laughs> to say it's drug use for grownups, meaning it's drug use for people who can control their impulses who um, can delay gratification and who, who can soothe themselves. People, the problem is that it's people with those deficits that are actually drawn to drugs. Mm. So in a way, if we, I'm not, not going to get on a soapbox for legalization. I don't think that's a good idea. But, um, but if we were to make drugs more, if we liberalized the regime, you would probably see more responsible use because those are the people who were deterred because it was illegal. Right. And they have those kinds of, of uh, internal you know, controls and they have a larger life. They have something to lose. Um, so Deep down, I think. I mean, it's interesting to see the use of meth among gay men and then see the use of meth among, say, truck drivers. Yeah. Meth is a working person's drug. It is. <laughs> it is, which is – and it keeps people – Again, boredom on these incredibly long truck rides um, and keeps you also awake so you're able to be yeah, more productive. And in, um, there's a book called Methland, which is wonderful. It's really the dreamland of methamphetamine, and it takes place in Old Wine, Iowa, with the uh, Purdue plant, the other Purdue, <laughs> the chicken plants, and how people staying awake for that. And also, those, some of those so agribusiness has really changed the environment there and led to some of the same kinds of despair that would see in Appalachia. And, and, and so methamphetamine was the drug. There's a lot of regional variation. Mm. But that, was, that came out of a similar yes. crisis socially. With, with gay men, it was interesting how uh, it's associated – with sex, primarily. Yeah. It's a sex, it's a, it's a drug used for what's called chemsex, which is people can stay up all night long, two days running, and all their inhibitions disappear. So those who particularly have internalized self-loathing, sexual inhibition, a sense of disgust at who they are, uh, and this drug enables them to, to feel confident, self-empowered, and also have intense sexual experiences that become things that the only – become increasingly the high point of their lives. And it becomes very hard to think of a future without any of those high points so happening. So the sex is more addicting than the drug. Well, the combination is. The truth is that afterwards they're not really interested in sex without it because it, mm -hmm. it, it creates mm -hmm. a whole different – I mean, I I've, I did it once, like twenty twenty years ago, by mistake, actually, because I thought it was cocaine, and I found out very quickly it wasn't. I didn't like it at all, because I'm, again, I'm I'm a I need downers. I really need downers, 